Come on. It's a lot better with you to such junk. But is it amazing? Okay, so we need specific. I don't know. That I don't know. That I don't know. Maybe you could I, I think Zev, I'm here. Maybe No, I'm talking about that color image is something. He said, you, you see the pictures of bacteria? I don't see that yet. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe technology, movement. I, I don't know. It's Tasha what she thinks. Okay. I mean, I do. I think it's good. Is it amazing? I don't know. I think maybe more could be done. He can thought. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. Oh, well, let me ask something. Th think about what is fantastic that you see and what could be added if you look at other sites. Right. Look at other sites. We'll see. Maybe there's more to be added. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. yes, you're listening to Spirituality, a program about spirituality and Judaism. Judaism Unplugged. Dr. Raphael Kelm will be joined tonight by Rabbi Naftali Citron, the spiritual leader, the rabbi of the Kalmbach Synagogue in Manhattan. It's a weekly program that explores some very interesting ideas relating to Judaism and spirituality. Yeah. Rabbi Citron will join us shortly. We begin with Dr. Raphael Kelman introducing this week's program. Yes, is, Dr. is Rabbi Naftali going to come on? He should be joining us momentarily. So okay. in the interim, why don't you tell okay. our audience about some of your concepts for the program? Yeah, and this yeah, is yeah, yeah. getting okay. a very nice response, by the way. We just played your original music, Come All. Are you are you joking? You did? Yeah, we just played it. Yes. Yes. Oh, how did it sound? <laughs> it sounded good. Yeah, you'll we'll, 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 we can play we can play it again so you can they can hear it yeah, in the put background. It on for ten seconds. Put it on for ten seconds. I gotta hear my own music. I don't know. Okay, we're going to put it on for you. Going to come all in addition to being a doctor, a holistic doctor, yeah, we, a regular yeah. doctor. Uh, Dr. Kelman is also a composer of music, and we're playing some yeah. of his music right now. Here we go. I don't hear that. Okay, it's on the air, so it's. Uh, well, listen, you can hear it, and you'll be able to see. And by the way, we're live on YouTube. Hey? People can watch us on YouTube as well. We'll play a little bit more a little later on. So let's give people an overview of exactly what some of the in interesting issues that you're going to be tackling with on this broadcast. Yeah, so the the main goal, really, of, of, of the show, as we said many, many times, of, of, absolutely to bring... The, the, the deeper message and the deeper meaning of the Torah and Judaism, for sure, that's the essence of the show. I'm absolutely also going to be bringing up health and healing, but from a very different perspective. Will it somehow relate to physical health and physical healing? Yes, but we're now driving things up to a much, much more important level because ultimately, what do we really want to heal? Uh, what is healing all about in the first place? If it's if it's just going to be focusing on the physical body, in the end, what does that mean? I'm not saying that there's no purpose to that. Of course there is. But we don't want to get lose the, the forest for the trees. So we're also going to be adding a much higher dimension of what is healing, what does refua really mean on the deepest level, is there, what is the Jewish perspective? What is the Jewish message? How come you don't hear much? You know, you hear a lot about the, the healing from the East, China, Asia, many, many countries that have systems, systems of, of healing. And some are quite, quite sophisticated. Um, some of them were just beginning to understand now what they really mean and their value. But Judaism tends to be silent about it. And one of the goals is to try to explain to people why is uh, uh, Judaism seemingly so silent when it comes to uh, the, this area of health and healing when so much has come out of China, 
right? So much is coming out of came out of Japan and all areas of the Far East. That's been coming out. Uh, we uh, have now Rabbi Naftali uh, Sikran of the Karl uh, School. Okay, well, here we got the real healer on. I'll leave it all in uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Sitron's uh, hands. And let me introduce um, our listeners to Rabbi Naftali Sitron. So Rabbi Sitron is a really, uh, a, really a teacher, a, a great friend, and someone that I, a, a confidant, in many many ways, and he is this to so many so many people. He's the rabbi of the Kalbach Shul on the Upper West Side. Many are familiar, and probably ninety nine percent of the listeners here, or maybe ninety eight percent, are familiar with Shlomo Kalbach, um, how he revolutionized uh, Jewish music. But even beyond that, he revolutionized Judaism. From, and people think it's just his music, but that was so revolutionary and, and and so inspiring and how much it affected the Jewish world. But as Rabbi Sitron will will explain that it, it goes so much beyond that, that there's a lot being transmitted uh, to people, to the listeners, to Jews and non-Jews uh, in Shlomo's songs. It's almost like I think about sometimes, you know, with the Beatles, people say, oh, there's a lot, a lot of things coded, right? in uh, Paul McCartney's words or, you know, of course, whether that's true or not, you know what I'm talking about, Zev, when you were around in the 60s, you know, 19, uh, I mean, when you, you know, it, people are familiar with, the, you know, the, the idea of messages in the music, but on, 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 the, on a real level, what I mean is that the soul that he puts into his music is, brings the music to a much, much higher level. And of course, it's his knowledge and his understanding of the Torah and Amuna that he's transmitting as well, not only through his uh, his music, but also in the way he and what he spoke about and, and his connection to so many people. So, and going back even beyond that, um, Shlomo's uh, father and uh, Rabbi Sitron's, Naftali Sitron's grandfather, a, a tzaddik in himself, um, that Eli Chaim uh, Sitron, the brother, the twin brother of... Um, oh, but- of what is it? My yeah, uh, Kalbach. Eli Chaim Kalbach. Yeah, Eli Chaim Kalbach. Um, and Naftali is the the um, the grandson and the father of Shlomo and Eli Eli Chaim uh, is Naftali Citron and 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 a, a, a great sage in his own right, different than uh, Shlomo and Eli Chaim and, and and different than his grandson. Maybe we'll. You'll touch upon the difference. How much of a difference is there? We notice the seed of these great people was in somewhere in Naftali Sitron's grandfather uh, uh, as well. So that so the Kalbach Shul though, uh, people know about the sh- really an incredible shul. It's it's sort of like the um, it's the it's where the diplomats right. It's the headquarters of uh, the Kalbach dynasty and revolution. There's so many uh, Kalbach shuls all over the world, but there's something so special about the, the, the central point from where the energy uh, emerged. It's the focal point. And no matter how many uh, shuls, Kalbach shuls or Kalbach minyanim the world will ever have, there will be nothing that will replace the focal point of where Shlomo himself Davin, that where his energy and the energy of his brother and 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 uh, of his father permeated the walls of of the shul, and I always say, you know, when I go to the Kabbalah shul, I feel like I'm in Israel. You know, it's like I, I'm at a count a consulate, uh, so it has that feeling as well. And I say also that there's only one shul that I could go to until I'm I'm in Israel, and that and that's the Kabbalah shul because when I'm there. At least I could fool myself in thinking that I'm uh, at the Kabbal show. So, with no further ado, let, let me introduce you know Naftali, and um, Naftali, just tell us how you know how it's different today than it was in the past. But feel free to start telling us a little bit more about the past and how it's relate related to the present shul and what changes are occurring, and we'll take it from there. Well, some people would think it's exactly the same. <laughs> right. In fact, there's, uh, um, it's a good question. You see, on the one hand, uh, 
the whole idea of the Kalbashal is is his chachut, which means to renew. On the other hand, there are already customs that have developed in the Kalbash style, whether it's the davening, the liturgy, or words that, that are frequently used, like holy brother, or the chavra, or things that have a basis in Judaism, uh, but have been used in a particular way. So the, the, the challenge always is whenever you have a a movement, a way of doing things, it becomes petrified. Is that the word? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So that that's part of the challenge that any group has. Uh, the early Hasidim were vibrant and and spiritual, and then then the the next generation would copy the 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 dancing without necessarily feeling the motivation. They weren't dancing because the custom was to dance. The custom was not to dance. They danced right. because they couldn't help themselves. So that's the issue that we have is that in, in order for there to be his conscious, there has to be... Yeah, which means to renew. Renew right? the uh, a, a openness to even within old Nagunim to occasionally improvise a small part of it, uh, to know what we're, what the foundation is, and also new Hasidus. And I say new Hasidus, I don't necessarily mean new, that it never existed, uh, meaning every generation has its own Torah. It's the same Torah, it comes from Sinai, but we have to be mechadish in Torah, and in the in the yeshiva world, it means coming up with a new explanation to resolve a difficult Rambam, which we are, you know, good on. We're on board with that, but it also means that there's a way to find a way within the Torah to speak to people's anxieties of today, to help them daven for what it is they need to daven for, something that connects the Torah and 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 and. Torah learning and tefillah, a lot of people say, rightfully so, that Zman Torah Lechud and Zman Tefillah Lechud, the time of Torah, uh, the the emphasis of Torah, and the time of prayer are like separate, separate but equal. But the truth is that Rav Nachman taught that they have to be in a much closer relationship with one another. So a lot of people feel like prayer is your emotional time and Torah is your is your intellectual time, and never the two will really meet, but they have to meet. We need a Torah that meets the tefillah, and we need a tefillah that meets the Torah. You know, I it, nowadays uh, Torah as is very easily um, can easily descend into something that's very uh, intellectual, very cer cerebral. And, you know, as the Baal Shem Tov would say that you always have to connect your learning. You can't forget about that. It's Hashem's Torah while you're learning. I think it's so easy to forget that, especially when you get into the, the tedious, difficult, the intricacies of the Talmud or, you know, Daf Yomi, you know, you're trying to get in 45 minutes or an hour, you know, a, a Daf or two, a page or two that will take some students uh, – in yeshiva, you know, six months. So, and yet it has it's it's very intellectualized and it's very difficult to accomplish what the Baal Shem Tov asked us to do, to always feel Hashem, the Amuna and His presence when when we're learning, even what could so be what feels like very very uh, dry uh, Torah. So. The, the, this leads to, to to a number to a number of questions. So, in general, do you see? And I think by now, uh, people know my opinion. Certainly, Zev, you if you may, since you may have been the only listener, uh, you know you certainly know. Um, you know, I think that one of the problems today, not only in the the school Jewish education, and I shouldn't say all schools, maybe it's just the ones that. I'm familiar with, or from what I hear about from other from others, but also in shuls, and um, and I wouldn't even say I don't want to say limited to say modern orthodoxy or just I would just say in Judaism in general 
that there's a movement more to, um, well, I think there's a few movements going on, but a, a very, very profound movement is the intellectualization of Torah, that Torah, is, certainly in schools, is about knowledge and information and education and you know a lot about the, the cerebral uh, part of who we are at the expense perhaps of the heart you know of, of the lave and also at the expense perhaps of emuna now of, of mis erroneously translated as faith uh, it means so much more than that, but there's a loss of this, not a, a diminution of something that called emuna, which is, it, it's a it's a belief, you know. By, by the way, Rabbi Ashlag talks about this very, you know, the Bala Salam, the, the author of the commentary on on the Zohar, the, the, the he, he cracked open the, the Zohar with his commentary, and he it, uh, it was in the last century. One of the things that he says is the the basis of emuna. Of faith is the is the the belief in yourself, but not the belief in your in an in, in your lower self, in an arrogant self, but in in a higher self. Meaning, like a kid says, sixteen years old, you know, mom, dad, I just feel I I love painting or I love music, I love performing, and I you know I just want to do it. I I want to go to music school. I want to be a painter. I want to do music. I just feel it's I could I could do it. And the, the, the child or the adolescent is feeling, oh, I could really be a great musician, a great artist, a great anything, a great rabbi. It doesn't really matter. It's a belief in themselves, but it's a much, it goes way beyond the facts. It's so beyond the seichel, right? That the belief in yourself, it, it, if it's true and it's based on a higher in feeling that's within every human being, especially a Jew, is this, which is, in, which is, which is the soul, the emuna. And at the same time, you're believing in Hashem at the same time. So it starts with the belief in yourself. And I, the Zohar says that if you don't believe in yourself, you're a kofar because you're denying the, the God, Hashem, that's inside you. And, and from that belief in yourself grows the, your belief into Hashem and the belief in the that you can t take this Torah and develop into greatness. In other words, the Torah says the what Hashem, what does Hashem want from that? Hashem says every Jew is gonna could could be a prophet. So now, if you say, "Wow, I believe that," and you, 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 they say, "Yes, you have to follow this path. It's a difficult path." But I believe in myself because I believe there's a prophet in me. Now that's the basis of, of Emuna. And then, of course, to believe that Hashem is Tov or Metiv and all these other um, elements, and that is Hashkacha, and that it's only for the good, and all of that, and Hashem is the whole universe, the whole existence. So I feel, and I want to get your opinion on this too, is that this approach, th th this is obviously not taught like this, but even a touch of this. However, it could be expressed, and and of course, it could be expressed in so many ways. Music plays a huge role in um, catapulting into this state. But then we have this, everything that I just described, and much more, of course. And then you have the knowledge component, right? And that is so emphasized because it, 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 it's education. They got to get educated, right? I remember, and then I'm telling you, I'm going to give the the microphone to you. Um, I remember my daughter was in. Uh, sixth grade, and she's taught Arba Misos Besdin, the four ways that Besdin, the high court in biblical times, the times of the, uh, the temple, the Beit HaMikdash, if someone did violate a certain law, if it was severe enough, they would get the quote-unquote death penalty, quote-unquote, because this is an extremely rare situation. And what are those four um, ways of executing someone is they call it the four ways i don't even want to say it on the air so i said but they're not very pleasant i said to the teacher to the principal i said how could you teach this to a sixth grader i said if, if you want a path to get children to get jewish souls to be turned off 
this is a very important ingredient. That's one. Now, well, you know, they're expected to know this when they to get into high school, and then you, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then even at not such an extreme, so much of the teachings that what they're learning, you wonder, okay, so they know we what is this gonna really do in terms of the development of the, the soul, the Jew, and the purpose of Torah and Judaism? Are we forgetting that? And how do you combine the two? And th this is, by the way, a very important component of the um, of the show. And then this is also a question about Judaism in general. Where are we going? And then, of course, I want to know where we, you know, the Kalbar Shul and what's in your mind. This is an opportunity for me to find out about what's in my 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 teacher and my friend's mind. What what are our thoughts? So, um, Dr. Kelman, Fal Kelman, who's also a you know, point out that you're a great scholar of Kabbalah, particularly the Kabbalah of Rabbi Ashlag, and your teacher, Rabbi Yehuda Brandwine, who you were one of his top students and great uh, expounder of his teachings that could talk in the words of language, of English, and, and, and science, how important it is that you continue to do that and not give up, Dr. Kalman despite all of the things that you mentioned and they all are true <laughs> and you could despair and say i what am i wasting my time i'm knocking my head against the wall to talk to educators and teachers and they're teaching uh in a way that doesn't necessarily give enough heart but let me let me what i think give you a little bit of hope because I think I myself was included in the school that used to think that there's like the Kabbalah and Hasidic side of Judaism, which is more spiritual, potentially more emotional. And then there's the Talmud and kind of Maimonidean school of Judaism, which is more like fact-based, emphasizing laws and and understanding how they came into being and a lot of it's very impractical because a lot of the laws are not actual things we do today they're just things that we study that take up a tremendous amount of time and with the the add we have today to ask young people to study hours of talmud of things that are not relevant to their life is, is extremely excruciating for for a lot of children i'm not suggesting we don't do that right what i'm suggesting is we have to relook at the whole paradigm uh, and reevaluate the whole paradigm because i think it's a it, we created a paradigm that's just not there we, we we're making it maybe it, it we created it so it's there because we created it it doesn't have to be there this dichotomy between the the head and the heart yeah, spiritual right. and you know we create this dichotomy and then we're when we sit in it you know and we and we complain about it because we we made it and now we're like dealing with the consequence of making it and i don't want to get into the history of why it came into being and whether it had to do with uh people reacting to shop site speed there's a gershon Sholem has that theory i'm not other theories are it's a reaction to enlightenment and 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 or, or or not wanting to be considered superstitious so if there's a historical re i don't want to get into the history a i'm not a historian b that's not it's not for us to decide why it happened the way it happened and even talking about gedolim great rabbis who at some point said you know i'm going to pick a side here i'll i'll, I'll focus on the gemara but not that I'm going to focus on the Gemara. I'm going to focus on a particular way of explaining Gemara that will leave out part of the Gemara and say that part is not relevant. So, for example, a lot of rabbis in yeshiva, they'll just skip Agadita. Just anything that's not focused on analyzing what the Torah wants us to do, even if many of those things are irrelevant because they're from things that are only done at the time of the base of Migdash, they're going to skip out almost half the Talmud right off the bat and say, we don't really understand that. So that's the first thing I'd like to address. This dichotomy yes. Yes. That, that exists, but it doesn't have to exist. So, right. so, for example, 
I'll give you an example. You can learn the Torah and you can learn the Talmud, and it's almost like they're two separate things. We say the Talmud is a commentary on the Torah, but I mean, it goes so far away from the Torah. You have a responsibility as a teacher, I do this as a rabbi, to go back to the Pasuk and explain now with the, let's say, Maskana, the final resolution of the Gemara, of how the Pasuk is interpreted by the Talmud. So you, we, we, we created two Torahs. The rabbis created two Torahs. They said it's the written Torah, Torah Shabbat, and a Torah Shabbat, the oral Torah that we call the Talmud and eventually all the rabbinic writing, for lack of a better word. Well, it's our job to put them back together, to say that, the, the yeah, there are two. From a librarian's perspective, there are two. But they're really one. You can't right. have one without the other. And we have to do the same. Th- and, and I think some rabbis do a decent job of that. They they give a drasha that includes the medrash, that includes the gemara, that includes the halacha, where they give a, a shir on the parsha or a speech and shul on the synagogue on the Torah reading that week. But we have to do that same thing. That that, that we know how to do a little bit. Correct? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. We have to do the same thing with the Talmud and the stories of the Talmud. With the Talmud and the faith of the the rabbis that talk about what they believed in. And the in, in the time of the Talmud, in the very text of the Talmud, in the parallel mid Russian to the Talmud, in the Kabbalah, in the works like the Zohar, the Sefer Yitzira, we have to start and, and I'm not saying to reinterpret the Talmud according to Kabbalah. That's okay in my book, but you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to do that because some people are not comfortable. They still want to say they're two different books. I'm okay with people who want to say that. That's fine. But what about the Talmud with the other sections of the Talmud? What about all the beautiful things Rabbi Akiva says? The Midrashim that Rabbi Akiva says. Sure. And when you learn those Midrashim deeply and then you learn the Gemara again, it's not the same Gemara. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a student, you know, you've been to university, or you're, you're you're writing a thesis. Um, so you want to you want to study someone's philosophy, right? So let's say uh, Heidegger, for example. So Heidegger wrote a book, one book. You don't really understand so much. Well, you find out. Well, Heidegger wrote two other books. Oh, really? So let me also read these other books, and then maybe I'll be able to understand this book a little bit better because he's kind of cryptic. He's saying things I don't really understand. And I, I can't believe he really means this. He must mean something a little bit more sophisticated than that. So you start looking at his other books. And, oh, now I'm beginning to understand who this philosopher is all about. So I'm going to give an example of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, okay? So everyone knows Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is all over the Gemara, everywhere, so many places, right? And his son, Rabbi Elazar, amazing, right? And like Baomer, everyone goes to bonfires and has a great, great, incredible experience. But what I don't understand, and, 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 and I don't mean in any way to be condescending, although I'm, I'm sure it will, it's going to come off this way. What I don't understand is this. How come? most of the shuls that I've seen. And and I, everyone except the Kalbach shul and one other shul. Well, I, no, I only, there may be others. Chabad, Chabad. Chabad, okay, there's two and Rabbi Boyan. Every other shul, and I looked, like they don't have a copy of the Zohar. How do you explain this? You know what my joke is? They're more, some of these shuls, or religious shuls, they're more likely to have the New Testament in their synagogue than the, the holy books of the Zohar. I, to me, it's it's a travesty. But again, you want to understand Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the Gemara. Well, <laughs> look at his other books. Are you are you uh, an intelligent person? Did you you want to know something about someone? Well, look about what he also wrote it wrote in other books. But that way of thinking is 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 not happening. And to me, honestly, I really think it's, I don't want to use the word sin, but the, we, the Jewish people, should really think about this. Why we don't have a Zohar in every single library, whether it's a school, whether it's a shul, are we doing something fundamentally wrong, even hurting 
ourselves and hurting the Shechina, and certainly to Rabbi Shimon. Well, he doesn't have an ego, of course. No, 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 no one has an ego except, of course, us. But think about it. You know, you know, like what is the best way? What does Hashem want? What is the best way to give back to Hashem? He's an author. Read his book. You know what an author? Rabbi Brandwein told this to me. What what can you give back to Hashem? You could give back that you're reading his book and you you believe in what he's saying and he's saying to do this. I'm going to do this. You know, you read a book, your self help book, and they say, okay, do this meditation, do this, do this, get up at this time, eat this, eat that, and people run and do it. And oh, the author is so happy. Well, this is. Hashem is giving us a, a methodology. He's telling us to keep this mitzvah, that mitzvah, do this. Do... Nah, it's, uh, read his book. That would give him the greatest nachas. It's the same thing with Rabbi Shimon. So here's a problem. So my, my feeling is, you know, you're talking about, Rabbi Naftali, about, you know, how do you integrate the Talmud, the Gemara, and these other aspects of Torah? In the end, it's one Torah. And our job and the challenge is, big, big challenge, is how it's going to have some some fusion at least on some level and i know we're not going to be able to accomplish this completely maybe ever except some of the great 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 people but at least a taste of it and to at least know okay we didn't accomplish it completely but but that's okay but at least to know that it's one torah and that even though we're, we're understanding gemara on this level and we know Tosmas and we know all the rishonim and the akronim you still don't really know the Gemara on a level that not only is beyond this, but it redefines it and it transforms it. This is the Arizal. He learned the Gemara, what, seven different angles and this, but then his final level of learning, it's as if he, he transformed it and redefined it. So at least to realize Wow, look what we don't yet know of what the Torah is really about. So you, I don't know. I mean, that's I see a, a, such challenges in, in front of us. But at least at the Kabbalah Shul, I don't feel any stress when I come there because I know yeah. you're on the road. Yeah, you, you you raise some some interesting points about how we we're still far away from this goal, and a lot of places are reluctant to have a Zohar and look I'm only here right now uh, that I became a rabbi and didn't go into real estate or something you know along the the lines like that because when I was 14 years old and I started learning Hasidut it, it spoke to my soul I don't yeah. think I would be the person I am today if I, I loved Gemara but it didn't do that thing it, it, it got my intellect but it didn't yes. get my heart yes so that's my story or part of my personal story but you know here's the beauty of it uh, and i know i'm trying to be the optimist and you're you're looking at the cup as being half empty and like well, let me show you let I'm me say the same thing i'm a universe. radical i'm a radical optimist i really am yeah. i know it's going to be good i know i know it's going to be good yeah. But you're pointing out that we have this thing missing. You know, we're missing this the Zohar in the in the libraries of most shuls. But let me point out to you what we have in most shuls. We have a shul Hanarath, and and most people say, well, that's that. What does that have to do with the Zohar? It has surprisingly a lot to do with the Zohar. And the shul Hanarath isn't just Rabbi Yosef Kara, who himself uh, studied Kabbalah, or the Ramah, who knew some Kabbalistic customs as well. But it also has the commentaries like the Magan Avraham, or even the Mishnah Brura, or the or or the various reiterations of the Shulchan Aruch, such as the Shulchan Aruch Harav, the Alter Rabbi of Chabad, or the commentaries uh, such as the Mishnah Brura, the Sephardic commentaries like the Kafa Chaim and things like that. Guess what? They uh, use the customs of the Ari, which are based primarily on the Zohar in their halacha in their not so much the shulchanach but the the commentaries on the shulchanach many many of them base tremendous amount of laws on the kabbalah of the practice of ari who's filtering the customs of the czar so when you see those sifri halacha those the, the, you're actually seeing many 
Kabbalistic customs. So for take, for example, the Art Scroll Sitter. If you look at the Art Scroll Sitter, we do the Spar, and I think the Spar does slightly more than the Ashkenaz, you'll see all of these Kabbalistic meditations, the Lashay Mirkud in various places, you'll, for the sake of the unification of the Holy One, Blessed Be He, and the Shechina, and the Brich Shemei, a section of the Zohar, when we open up the Aron Kodesh, the Kigavna, the unification of the of the seventh sphere of Malchut with the other six sphere out of Zer Ampin, and then the, and it goes on and on. So eventually, Rafael, Doctor Kalman, no, 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 or, or the rabbi, the local Orthodox rabbi, and say, what is this section of the Zohar? What is this song that's attributed to the Arizal or his students doing in my sitter? And and I, I like that's the yes. gateway drug to yes. Kabbalah. <laughs> you know, but you know, it's great that you see the 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 Jewish world needs more teachers like you that can expand our horizon and to show that what we think is just limited to halacha it, it interfaces with everything to point out to people that it's all holographic it's one torah and you tell people let's say oh they're bored with the halacha they're just starting don't worry don't worry you're gonna see just look a little bit here soon you're gonna see this incredible holographic view so again it's really the way it's taught and teaching exactly what you're saying you know, that's why I, I, I think we need more teachers who are like you. And I'm not trying to give you any respect right now. I'm just saying we need God forbid. teachers. <laughs> God forbid, God forbid. No, believe me, I, I, I do, even in my sleep, I had I had a dream of Rebbe Naftali that I, I, I did something. I'm going to tell the whole world. Uh, I did something and I woke up and I said, every part of my Judaism is gone. Everything that I accomplished, zero, whatever. I don't even know what I did or whatever. I'm, I, I don't know. Didn't The dream didn't tell me. But it was zero. Everything that was stunning, the learning of 13 years of my brand went nothing. It's as if I did zero. I'm standing, walking with Reb Naftali. He had a big smile on his face, happy, go lucky, walking. And he said to me, ah, what are you, it just started all again, the process. And not only that, it all comes back. And then I, that was, and then the dream was over. So well, that's the praise I'm giving you. But it's not you, it's, it's, the, it's the learning from where you come come from yeah. the people that you come from and the, the the that you're fortunate that you were and and listen we all I'm, are I'm very fortunate thank you thank and you also it's the, not, you, it really you, isn't me yeah and i know you, yeah, that's right but you are we all are descendants of great 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 jews we all are we all have the zohar chasteavo so maybe go el of nebenham that we have great great incredible parents and grandparents and we are part of a lineage that is beyond imagination you know and by the way this is what they should be teaching in schools that what we need to go back by the way i want to tell you something i'll tell you how i stayed sane okay i went to you know this and maybe i'm not sane. you're gonna say sane you're not so sane um over here you are yeah i want <laughs> and i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you the, the 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 how fortunate I am. I went to schools not good. I, I'm not gonna, it doesn't pay to mention them. It's not important. Very good. I learned a lot of Gemara, which I don't remember anything. A lot of Gemara, a lot of Gemara. tremendous, tremendous. It was considered a very good, very solid religious school. Anyone who's very very from would want to send their children. In those days, it's this it's many schools like this today. And by the way, this still exists. That the real focus is on from kite which i'm not putting it down but what it, it could very easily go too far and it happened that way with me okay it didn't penetrate me at all it didn't it had no effect on me um at all i got nothing out of it and i was always scared that the next test i'm gonna fail somehow i didn't maybe because i cheated or whatever and i remember nothing but i want to tell you something that saved me it's really amazing so i lived I, and i told this to you i lived in far rockaway wavecrest in bayswater and there was a rabbi there, uh, his name was Rabbi Chevelle. And yeah, most of the people there were not really religious. There were a lot of immigrants from Russia. They said, nice people, but not, you know, not, not the typical, but beautiful, wonderful people. 
And I, I finally realized that this was Rabbi Chevelle who translated the Ramban. Not only translated the commentary, he just, boom, it was a closed book. This man was just, just exploded the Ramban. And then I realized that, and then I had him as a, literally a, a, a private teacher. I used, because no one cared about him. No one even talked. And then I started realizing, I mean, you got, you got, you got the, 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 the students of the Ramban here and no one even talking to the man. I used to walk home with him. This is what got me, by the way, where the heart woke up. Because I used to I, I I used to watch him walk home Saturday night, massage by himself. And I watched how slow he was walking. And I saw the moon and the stars. And the, the you, there was something, it was an emotion I experienced that I never felt before. Only later on did I realize, I mean, he it was captivating me. I I, I was stunned. What was he doing? He was exhibiting, you know, the Pasuk. Ma'ashem, duration, what does Hashem want from you? Kim la so tzaka, but but oiv chesed and to love kindness, but snei alecha timelokecha and to walk humbly with Hashem. He was the man talking about a role model that stunned me, and and then sure enough, I wanted to walk home with him, and then I did, and then I started asking him questions on the Ramban. He was teaching me the Ramban, telling me things. I still remember the things that he told me. I, it, so many things, but I'll tell you what was the magic that the Ramban, not only of course the inner inner meaning of the Torah, like what is it really all about? And you know, what is the the covenant, the connection between us and Hashem, and how it Ramban was amazing in that he had a whole sweep of history in the things that he would talk about, you know, how you know Masavot, Siman Lebanim, we to see that this mirror images and throughout Jewish history you see patterns and reflections and you know you know it's like in a beautiful concert is uh, what is it called um, variations on the theme the beauty and and this is what I was Zohar to have and that's oh what a Judaism this was the Judaism and I remember this I remember I would come to school this was already I was in high school and I said oh my god I'm look who I'm learning with it was such a letdown on Shabbos, I had, I said, oh, God. I said, these people, they don't have they don't, nothing. Let them go to first learn with Rabbi Chevelle and then come back and be my teacher. So that was the story, but it was something. Now, yes, of, of course, the Ramban was a Makubal, but he didn't, what it was, obviously, he didn't teach me Kabbalah, but he taught something that was so beautiful. That I, this will take five shows to explain. But my point is, is that it was beyond knowledge. It was the it was the, the opening up of the Jewish soul. And if it wasn't for that, that started my whole journey that I knew there was something else. And from there, even though I still veered away, I was always looking back. I don't matter where I was or what I was doing, I always remembered that there's something, this Torah is burning. Even if I didn't keep it the right way, whatever, that's not, it's a different discussion. I always look back and, and that's because of the way it was taught. And then fortunately I was over to meet, uh, I'll tell you quickly, you know, with Rabbi Brandwine, uh, Tzaddik and, you know, I always say he didn't teach me Kabbalah. What did he teach? The Pardes. The, the job of the Jew today and the Jewish education is to teach us the Pardes, every, every single Jew to be able to walk into this paradise and we deserve it. We deserve it. The people are hungry for this. And and fortunately we have shuls like the Kabbalah Shul that's giving a taste of this. I want to I want to now go to really real important stuff. Well this is all important. So tell me about the Kabbalah Shul now, where we are now, how are we going a little bit differently from where we were, where Shlomo was, how is it different? What's the game plan? And I wish that millions of people would be hearing this conversation because I, I really hope so much that people can get a taste of what I'm so privileged about. And it's not the it's not the kiddish, Rabbi. There's no kogel in the kiddish. You know what I mean? I'm talking about I, the, I, the beauty of, of the beauty of the shul. <laughs> well, for, before I, I, I talk about the shul, I just want to acknowledge. Um, 
your your journey and and point out that a lot of people are like you in that whatever their educational opportunities are within Judaism, they, they're they missing something. Like you you knew you were missing something. You had a Gemara, and by the way, I don't agree with you when you say that you forgot all the Gemara. <laughs> I learned, no, because I, I learned with you, I remember we, we spent uh, five, six hours over Sukkot learning the Rishima Shurim of Rabbi Soloveitchik on, on Gemara Sukkah. And Rafael, you you didn't forget. You you have a great, you have a mind of a, of a, of a Gemara person. That, I do. I love it. I love the word. You, you really are, you know, a top Gemara person. So even though you're being humble, and maybe you didn't really appreciate it is what it is. You didn't think, what am I going to do with this information? Right. That and look, I forgot it the way you forgot it because you can't really remember that stuff. It's just too dense. But it comes back to you. It's a it's a it's learning how to learn, not just information. Yeah. But you needed Rabbi Chavel in your life. You needed that interaction that spoke to your soul, just like I needed the Hasidus that spoke to my soul. And Gemara, which I liked, still wasn't quite enough. And let's hope that people every and, and, and there's other people along the way. We just we're just mentioning for brevity's sake, uh, you know, limited examples. But everyone has their their book or their rabbi or their teacher or their friend or like you mentioned, family is so important. I know you learned a lot from your family that you didn't appreciate necessarily when when it was happening, and only later no, you no. realized what you got. That's right. right. That's so, right. so let's just first start by saying, because you say where where is the shul, where was it, and where is it going? Let's first start by saying that I mean I have a huge debt of gratitude to my family, the Kabach family, not just for the shul, but for my own hadracha, for my own yeah, yeah. for my own the way I was raised. And it starts with my parents. My parents are, um, my, my father is Rabbi Citron from Los Angeles, who is a great Magid Shir, who taught me how to learn a Rashi, mm. who taught me, who taught me that humors are not never to be advertised. They're oh, secrets, beautiful. not not things to wear on the cuff. He, my wow. father had humors that he he won't tell me, mm. and I have to like find out by observing him when he thinks I'm not looking. Because wow. if he thinks I'm looking, he won't do it. Mm. So this is so I I grew up in that type of beautiful, household, man. and then and then. On my mother's, my, my father's parents were Erlich Yidin. My, my father's father kept the minion going in the young Israel of Astor Gardens. It, it went because he never missed a minion until he got sick and passed away from that illness. And then that Shul never was able to keep a daily minion after he passed. That's how strong his his Amuna was. And then my mother's father, Elichayim Kabach, he taught me to love Hasidus. I already loved Chabad Hasidus. He turned me on to all of Hasidus, and and because that's what his that he was dedicated to teaching and publishing all works of Hasidus that he could, many many volumes and many different rabbis. So he taught me that. Yeah. And Reb yeah. And Reb Shlomo further like opened up my heart and taught me how to express myself. I don't quite do it the way he did. He was fantastic. But um, also how to embody some of these ideas to like make them real, to take them from the page and to like internal, like to swallow it, to eat it, to internalize mm -hmm. it. So he taught me a lot about that. So that's the first thing is, is whatever I have, it's basically from growing up and also for the yeshivas I went to, Chabad and, and, and non-Chabad, that different Rabbeim, Magid Shiurim, and Rosh Hashivas, and, and Mashpiyim, they each taught me something, some of them more than others. I, I don't want to mention yeah. specifically sure. this one and that one. I had, uh, I'll mention Rabbi Ezra Shafat, for example, who taught me uh, Derech Halimut, the way of learning in the Brisker Derech, which I'm very grateful for. I, I, I tried to lose it, 
and it came back to me. But right. I also want to I will also want to mention the three gedolim of my generation that I'm extremely indebted to. And I wish I could spend one hour. I wish I could. I just don't have the time. I yeah. wish I could. And I think anyone who does this, listen to my advice, they will become an unbelievable human being, an unbelievable rabbi, unbelievable teacher. I don't do it because I have too many other things to do. If you would learn one hour a day of each of the three rabbis, I'm going to say, you would have the tools to succeed in this world as a halachic person, as a hashkafic person, as a Hasidic person. And they are the Lubavitcher Rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, and Rabbi Joseph Bar mm. These are people sure. that we either met or could have met yes, in our yes. lifetime. And we still have access to their closest students. That's right. Or most, many of their closest students who are still alive and teaching their right. Torahs. And I am so indebted to these three. Yes. Gedole Hadar. I can't, yes. I can't emphasize enough, despite coming from this very illustrious Kaaba family. Yes. But they themselves understood that the Gedoli Hadar were these three Rebbe's, and they had other earlier Gedolim that I never could have met because yeah. they passed away 50 or 60 or 70 years ago before I was born, and they were still around. But it's, it's really so I want to start with that. That's you know, the I, foundation. Yeah. No, by the way, I I just want to say something about the shul. So that's, you need, a, you need someone who it can embodies all of this. You know, it's not, you know, you know this, I mean, just by being around the right people, and I'm, of course by a tzaddik, but someone who, who who by osmosis internalized the universe, the world that you internalize, and then it, just by being around people like that, you transmit it to other people. That's why, uh, and I'm not saying this to plug the Kabbalah but the beauty of it is the osmosis is there. It's there for people to come, whether any 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 level of Torah or knowledge. I know we don't have much more time, um, but I, I really want to. I know we do. We have seven more men. Then I'm going to give it to you. I mean, that's why I'm such a fan of the Kabbal Shul, and because there's no the, the the main focus is this: is to give over exactly what Naftali Rabbi Sitron was saying. The, that the incredible gift of us through, that came through smicha, osmosis, just like what Moshe gave to um, Yoshua, it, you have that there. When you have the right teachers, it's 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 a type of Rav Moshe and uh, the Baba Cherebi, You know, my salvation. There's a there's a common denominator that will be beautiful for any type of Jew. It doesn't matter if you know nothing, if you know this, you know that. And the common denominator is what Judaism is about. And I, I wish there would be more shuls like the Kabbalah shul. If you could just say, you know, I know it's difficult, but like in two or three lines, what is it about our shul that it, we want to share with the world, uh, religious, everyone? And where do you, what do you think the next step may be? You can give us a, a prelude. So I, 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 I'm hoping, I'm hoping that despite all of the, the people who are trying to beat uh, the drums of separation, of war between Democrats and Republicans and Chilonim uh, and 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 Datiim, uh, you know, all of the people who make a livelihood, you know, sadly politicians and. And, and and many religious people and many anti religious people they're invested in having uh, a side i understand them it makes sense from their perspective they're fighting their fight that's not our fight our fight i, I don't want to use it overuse word of athos that's not that's the it's a little bit it, it's a little bit overused so i'm not going to use the word athos that's not what i mean what i mean is being somewhat more open for people who are not observing like us to say what we have here has value to you, but we respect you as a human being. And we give them access as needed, not by ramming it down their throat, 
not by overly judging them, but by giving them opportunities, showing them what it can do. And by, and also to do that to the Torah community. Um, and I'm not saying the Torah community already has the answers, just to show them where the answer is. Just like a good rabbi, who if you ask the rabbi, where did he get that information from, should be willing to share the source and 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 a good student will say, oh wow, that's that's great. And I think we have a Torah that's not Torah of Kabbach, not Torah of Chabad, it's Torah's Hashem. Mm, it's right. the Torah of God and it's Tamima, it's a whole and it's integrated. I know that's what you're working on. And it's Meshivas Nafesh. It brings mm -hmm. a person's soul back into focus. It gives you the emuna you need. It gives you the seichel you need, the intellect, the faith, the the practice of doing the emuna, not as just blind faith, but practicing something till it become you become strong in it, till it gives you a vitality and and like you said gives you the faith in yourself not in an unwarranted way but in a way Reb Nachman said that the future holds in store God forbid people not even believing in themselves and we have to look out for that because God gives us the gift of faith not just in him that's but right him. that's beautiful and and they come they come concomitantly they come they, they if they don't come together then there's some weakness in your amuna you know if you only have, you say you have great faith in Hashem, Amuna, but you don't have belief in your own self, and there's a problem with your Amuna. And a Kalva Homer, certainly, if you don't see the greatness and the belief in your in your in your friend to believe, wow, I believe in you. That's the, the greatest, you know, it's the greatest gift you could give somebody. Say, listen, I believe in you. You know, wow, what a gift. And um, it's it's beautiful. I I, I just wish um let, let me let me say something real quick. I'm gonna give you a minute because we only have. Uh, Zeb, give us another hour. <laughs> we'll have we'll have you back many 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 many. I mean, we're just scratching the surface. There's a, there's a beautiful feeling. You know, sometimes I come to Shul and I say, you know, even if I just dive in five sentences here, I feel I accomplished. I I gained. I now forget about gaining. I gave. I gave. I feel that 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 connection and that, not a spiritual high that people m m misconstrue kalbachul it's not about a spiritual high it really isn't that is not kalbach it's not about whoa you know some uh, and by the way that's that is something that you're ch we're changing you're changing that this is no longer the grateful dead you know i just went to woodstock it's not about the woodstock anymore we're in another it's not just about getting higher 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 there's a beautiful synthesis of, you know, Chesed and and Gvura and Yiras Hashem, that I I do feel the shul needs to rebrand itself and to show that Yiras Hashem is alive and well, and it's not and it's it's the vessel that makes us have this uh, Chesed and this music and love even higher, and I think that's a challenge because people you know people think we're just you know, I think yeah, I, 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 I hear think, you. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what you're we, saying. We need a good PR and marketing company. Yeah. Though, you know, people think we're just about the high or just about the song, and 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 it's not that people don't love singing, but it's it's much more balanced. It used to be more light and a little less vessel, and now there's a, we're hoping. To, to simplify it, this a great vessel is a little greater. I thought it was really great. I, it's a great, I have a great opportunity to talk to you. It's, it's rare, Thank right? You. This is wonderful. Thank you. And this is why I love going to a massage therapist. I, I have a captured audience. I have somebody to talk to for a few minutes. It's good. This is we good. Have, we got, we're going to do it again. We have um, great. We'll do 100 of these conversations. Now, thank you so much. I, I really love you. I, I look forward to seeing you with your shop. Every you too. Well. Thank Thank you for everything. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you.